join Hani Mahmoud, who's outside Al-Aqsa Hospital in Deir al-Bala, that's in central Gaza. Hani, despite Israel's claims of tactical pauses in some areas of southern Gaza, attacks are continuing. Bring us up to speed with what's been happening in the last few hours. Yes, Fali. Well, we're starting to see this tactical pause as an extension to all the misleading, contradictory and confusing narrative by the Israeli military. There is fa the fact that there is no tactical pause, there is no lit up in the attacks, no slowing down, any signs of it across the Gaza Strip. Whenever possible, the Israeli military continues to strike uh, across the Strip and to further causing civilian casualties, creating more tragedies for entire families. And this is, I want to insist on this point. The pattern that we're seeing so far is entire families being obliterated inside residential homes. And when I see that, we're talking about uh, three generations in one in one residential home. And the pattern of these attacks have been happening repeatedly. We were just in the middle of a crowd here at the Luxa Hospital outside the emergency department near the morgue of the hospital where remaining family members, the crowd, uh, get together, those who survived the attacks, those who were injured in the overnight attacks of Nusra refugee camp, they were here at the hospital paying respect, performing the last, uh, uh, the last prayer. As you can see from the frame, these are the scenes from the hospital, the crying, the crying mothers right here who just said goodbye to family members who were taken outside the hospital all the way to the graveyard. Overnight attacks on two overnight attacks on two residential buildings on al Nusayrat refugee camps and a third one at al Baraj refugee camp resulted in the murder of 17 people at least with more people is still under the rubbles we were told by paramedics and civil defense the crew member the the attack was relentless and brutal it destroyed the entire residential building there's still more people under the rubbles and the reason we're seeing this high number of casualties is because the vast majority of people are displaced and they end up living together in, like, in, in, in large number in small spaces that, is, uh, that are available right now at the, the central area. So every residential home is packed with many civilians and children and women who are unfortunately becoming the, uh, the falling casualties of these unpredictable falling bombs on residential homes. 17 people so far confirmed dead with at least 35 of the critically injured between Al-Aqsa Hospital and Al-Auda Hospital. That's where they were transferred. And, uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the tragedy of the hospital is that it doesn't have enough uh, a, a med sufficient medical staff, medical supplies to help uh, save lives and help those who uh, have been injured uh, in those uh, attacks. Meanwhile, the, every once in a while we hear this constant artillery at the eastern part of the Strip, and this has been going on since, uh, as far as we recall, the, the week one, week one of this genocidal war is part of what the Israeli military is conducting, the creation of a buffer zone uh, that is already uh, shrinking the size of the Gaza Strip. Yeah, and more more people arriving, as we saw there at the hospital, uh, Al-Aqsa Hospital, where you are, honey, because of these latest airstrikes on central Gaza. Uh, the the so-called tactical pause that Israel announced uh, on, on Sunday, well, this was meant to allow some aid into the Gaza Strip. Do we know how much of it has gone in in the last few days? Only less than a trickle amount of aid. What we since the the, the the announcement of this contradictory tactical pause that it hasn't been confirmed so far either by the Israeli military or the political level. Uh, we're talking about four trucks, four commercial trucks that have been allowed into the Gaza Strip. But as of yesterday, as law enforcement personnel, we're trying to secure more of these trucks, commercial trucks or aid trucks coming into Gaza. They were shot at and reports of many of them uh, were injured during the attacks. See, these sort of attacks on aid workers, on law enforcement securing the delivery of aid, on uh, aid seekers are making the work uh, uh, of aid workers quite difficult difficult on the ground. The United Nations uh, and UNRWA particularly has raised this concern multiple times about the lack of safety, the zero safety guarantee for aid workers. And that been, went on for quite some time. The COGAT, that's the Israeli security agency that accused UNRWA that it has a logistical problem and it, it held UNRWA responsible for the inability to deliver aid. Well, 
at the same time from what we're seeing and documenting on the ground is the constant attacks on food distribution points that happened in the past, aid workers, aid seekers are the real reasons that are hindering the delivery of aid, uh, of an already broken aid mechanism since the beginning of this genocidal war. Thank you very much, Hani, for the update. That's Al Jazeera's Hani Mahmoud live there in Dar al Bala in central Gaza. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.